Okay. Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Mihai Ionescu. And I'm Pang Ying. And welcome to another session of Google Payments Live. Um, this is our first office hour since Google I.O. And we had uh, some very excitement, exciting announcements at Google I.O. Uh, we'll do a recap of those. And of course, uh, we'll go uh, over questions uh, posted on our moderator page. So Pong, what happened at Google I.O.? And what kind of announcements did we have there? Cool. I mean, we made some huge announcements at I.O. A few of the things that we announced were the Save to Wallet API, which allows you to save offers to your wallet. Um, and we announced a few updates and new features of in-app payments. So I'll cover a few during uh, our session today, and then like Mihai's can cover a few as well. Um, a few the the ones that well, the new features and functionality are we launched subscriptions. In addition to that, we announced a new pricing structure. So why don't you tell them what the pricing structure is? Uh, sure. So um, we got a lot of feedback from developers and merchants. Uh, they were really happy with our 5% pricing structure, one of the most aggressive in the industry. Uh, but we also heard that for larger uh, payments, uh, they would like to have a more flexible structure that uh, uh, reflects larger amounts. Uh, so we're very happy to announce that at Google I.O. we introduce uh, a pricing structure based on a 1.9% uh, rate plus a fixed amount and uh, a 5% rate uh, depending on uh, the payment amount. So this will adjust uh, automatically to give developers the most favorable rate. Um, so yeah, it's great. I mean, yeah. it's great for a lot of large or a lot of developers are actually like choosing larger uh, order values. So something like, for example, one of the partners who was presenting with us, Kabam, they had uh, average order size of something like forty-five dollars, and five percent isn't that great, but one point nine percent and thirty cents is uh, is amazing. So I think if you go out and you try to find a uh, talk to credit card processors, I think the lowest fee that they typically give out is somewhere around one point nine percent and thirty cents. So yeah, so you, you can't get better than that. And you'll notice that uh, the uh, threshold where we switch from uh, five percent to the uh, one point nine percent rate is around nine dollars or so uh, for uh, U.S. dollars. Uh, it will uh, be different uh, in other currencies. Uh, so check uh, which one is uh, best for you. Uh, not to mention that Google Wallet for digital goods is a super easy API to implement. So if you're thinking about monetizing a web app now or sometime soon, be sure to take a look at the documentation. I mean, we're actually going to go through some of the subscriptions changes and JSON Web Token documentation today. And the, the link for the presentation that we gave at I.O. is bit.ly slash GWDG slides. That's Google Wallet for Digital Goods slides. Um, and do you just want to cover it now? Uh, yeah, sure. So let's go. Let's take a the look, slides. At, let's the have look at the slides. Specifically, the slides about uh, what changed before, uh, how to add. I mean, how to add subscriptions to your JSON Web Token. So let's switch to the slides. Cool. Uh, so this, uh, what you see on the screen right now, is the JSON Web Token that defines a subscription item. Um, I, if you're not familiar with JSON Web Tokens, it's basically a method to uh, encode some JSON and append a signature, signature to it. Because the way the API works, it's a JavaScript call to initiate the purchase flow. All of your information passed to the client side. And in order to secure this information on the client side, we pretty much append a signature, or we use JSON Web Token for a standard to append a signature to the data to make sure that it hasn't been altered. Um, what you're seeing here is the item itself, an item that defines a subscription item. Um, and the differences are highlighted in yellow. So here, the type is a little bit different. It's a Google Payments in-app uh, subscription, and then it's V1. And then within the item request itself, you're defining the initial item. Like It could be initial purchase, uh, like something like prorated. Or it could be a free trial for a month or anything else. Uh, and then you're defining the recurrence. Uh, there's also a few options that you can see. Well, right now, we only support monthly frequency. 
But in the future, we hope to support a few more different time cycles, like uh, bi-weekly, monthly, or bi-weekly, annually, weekly, daily. So we'll give a lot of different options to the developers. Uh, is there anything I'm missing, Mihai? Uh, I think that covers it. So uh, as you can see, it's very easy to implement subscription. Once you uh, implemented the single uh, item payment, subscription is just a matter of uh, adding a, new, a few lines to the JWT uh, and processing uh, some extra callbacks. Uh, why don't you talk a little bit about the difference in uh, callbacks for subscriptions? Sure. So there's one main difference in the callback, and this occurs when a subscription is canceled. So when a user decides to cancel a subscription within their buyer center, uh, you'll get a notification on your server saying that we can no longer process the subscription, and your server should then uh, end their access to whatever content that you're providing them. So all of this documentation can be found on our developer's guide. And the developer's guide can be found at developers.google.com slash in-app-payments, plural. Um, so yeah, take a look at it. It's there if you're interested. And it's really, really easy to integrate. I mean, we can go through the slides uh, and then speak a little bit to the integration. But it's basically define a JSON web token call our JavaScript library. And that initiates a purchase flow. And there's some postback handling, but that's really easy as well. Great. So um, to recap we, what we did at I.O., a new pricing structure uh, based on feedback from developer. Uh, for larger transactions with high order value, we now charge a 1.9% uh, plus a fixed fee. Uh, and for microtransactions, uh, it's still 5%, and you will get the most favorable rate uh, automatically. And of course, also based on uh, developer feedback and uh, requests, we added subscription support, uh, which uh, very simply and naturally um, can be integrated with your existing integration. Great. And there's more coming, probably. I think. And there is more coming. Stay tuned. Yeah, release and iterate. So you, you can uh, start integrating subscriptions. Right now, they are available in the sandbox. Uh, very soon, we plan to release them uh, into production. Uh, if you have um, any issues, uh, we have uh, a group where you can ask questions. Uh, or uh, at our next office hours uh, session, we can go over any of those issues. Yeah, these are bi-weekly, by the way. So we'll be covering any questions that you have about payments at Google or Google Payments. So Great. So let's uh, move on and uh, look at some questions. So questions that I we got on our moderator page. You can also talk about Google Developer Academy. Oh, yes. Really right, right. So oh, so many, so many new things to talk about. <laughs> uh, so let's look at one more thing here. So also since I.O., we launched uh, a new site for developers, which is called Google Developer Academy. And uh, so it's at developers.google.com slash academy. And if you go there, you'll find a lot of tutorials and courses covering uh, all Google, all kinds of Google APIs. And in particular, for Google Wallet, we have a new course called Google Wallet for Digital Goods, which gives you a step-by-step -step tutorial on how to uh, integrate the API uh, with your uh, web application. Uh, very simple. Uh, go have a look. Just four simple steps. Uh, and of course, we have a sample app uh, that will guide you uh, through all these steps. And you know, in less than a day, you can be set up and uh, start making some money. So developers.google.com slash academy. Cool. Great. Cool. So let's now take some questions. Yep. We're taking some questions from the, uh, what was it called again? on our moderator page, moderator. and maybe we have some others from other sources. So let's see. Let's start, since we we've got? been talking about subscriptions, we have a couple about subscriptions. 
so let's address those um, so for subscription is uh, monthly the only supported frequency um, well right now monthly is the only supported supported frequency um, like I said we're looking to support additional ones in the future uh, I mean it's only in sandbox right now and I, I don't really know the backend code that well, but I imagine it's like server setting up a separate yeah, cron job or some time schedule. So it shouldn't be too difficult. I guess we're trying to just get it out in the wild and have developers start using it. Um, and yeah, I mean, like yeah, we'd like, we'll like to hear some feedback on uh, what uh, particular frequency would be more useful for developers. Is it you know bi monthly? You want to charge weekly? Uh, it would be great to know. Yeah, and I think we'll also do something like we will enable developers to have a separate API call to initiate their recurrence requests. So like you could say, oh, I want to make 12 recurrences, and then you schedule it yourself. Great. So also subscription related, uh, when are you launching the uh, new subscription API into production? Uh, so when will that happen? <laughs> that's, that's another good question, but you know, because it's Google, unfortunately, we can't share specific dates, but we know that it's coming very soon. Um, I hope you all are enjoying it, and or well, I hope you are, are playing around with it in Sandbox, and uh, the API won't change at all. So in order to change the production when production is ready, all you have to do is switch out your, uh, well, you have to change production config in the loader, and you have to switch out your seller ID and seller secret uh, when you're defining your JSON web tokens. So it may happen sooner than you think. Uh, if you plan to add subscriptions, uh, get ready, implement in the sandbox, and then it will be just a matter of flipping a switch to enable it in production. All right, so one more question um, On related to subscription. Yeah, there's another one. Uh, is Google pay subscriptions a solution for uh, software as a service application subscriptions? Um, sure. Yeah, yeah. Sounds like it should be sounds fine. Sounds like a <laughs> like a great fit. Um, <laughs> it depends again, based on the previous question, how often do you want to charge the customer? Yeah. Uh, but uh, it sounds like an excellent fit, and you can uh, add um, additional um, application and additional subscriptions uh, as you see fit. Um, so, go play with it and let us know how it works. Yeah. So I mean, Google Wallet for digital goods has been optimized for digital goods. I mean, if you're selling something like a service, you can also use it. Um, it's just like it depends on what additional information you need to provide within the purchase experience that sometimes school official goods may or may not support. But I think in this case, where they're trying to sell um, software as a service, that it, it should be completely fine. Yeah. Great. OK, so we covered the subscription questions. Let's take one about currencies. Um, so one developer says his merchant account is in euros, uh, but he would like to charge users in a different currency, probably in another European country which does not uh, use the euro currency. Uh -huh. uh, is that possible? Uh, so let's uh, take an example. Let's say you are in euros and you want to charge in British pounds, so from euro to GBP. Uh, yes, it is possible. And uh, you can find the available currencies listed in our documentation. Uh, you would just need to specify the new currency in uh, the JWT when you place the uh, payment request. Uh, what will happen? The user will be charged in that particular currency, let's say Brit uh, British pounds, uh, and on his credit card statements, you know everything will be in British pounds. Uh, you, however, will receive the payout in your local currency, which in this case is euros, and the uh, transaction, the exchange, will happen automatically at the best rate of the day. So you don't have to worry about any of those. Uh, you just have to uh, make sure you charge uh, the user in the amount you want in his local currency, and then you will automatically get the funds in uh, your, the currency of your account. Everything happening transparently at the best rate for you. Yeah, and we pull uh, something like every hour, every two hours mm -hmm. against the forex rate, so we typically have pretty decent rates. It's a pretty good deal. Uh, pretty accurate rates. Okay, let's get another one. Uh, we have a couple of questions about adding 
other debit credit cards to the Google Wallet account. Hmm. Um, it's not not sure if this is related to the uh, Google Payments API or just uh, the wallet account, the in-store wallet account. Um, so I think that one may be for uh, adding additional cards into the offline wallet, into like NFC wallet. Okay. That's what it sounds like. Um, and that is another good question. Uh, I mean, we're always trying to expand the availability and usability of wallet. Um, right now, I mean, it's MasterCard, City MasterCards, mm -hmm. but we are looking to expand, I would say, to uh, stay tuned for announcements in the future. I mean, this is Google. We can't pre-announce anything. I would love to be like, yes. <laughs> but we'll see what comes down the road. Great. And with uh, payments uh, right now, uh, users can uh, use their credit card or debit card. Uh, it's for, for the online uh, API. Yeah. So yeah. online online yeah. payments supports all credit cards, all networks, uh, well, all major networks. Um, it's just the offline NFC portion that is limited to City Mastercards right now. And of course, we're looking to add new forms of payment to both, in including uh, local forms of payment. Mm -hmm. So good. So we covered that. Let's see. There's a question about uh, using Google Wallet on a rooted phone. Uh, so I think that one has been uh, also answered in the past. Uh, we strongly recommend uh, not to install or use Google Wallet on a rooted phone. Uh, the reason is when uh, you root the phone, you remove an extra layer of security. Uh, so uh, of course you can use it, but then you have to know uh, what's happening on your phone and you'll be responsible uh, for any um, applications trying to you know, steal your PIN or do stuff like that. Uh, so you know, the short answer is uh, don't do it. Use Google Wallet on a non-rooted phone for your own security. OK. Do you have anything else? I don't know. Are there any more questions? Um, there are along the same lines about uh, loyalty cards uh, to Google Wallet. So. Um, as we said, we are looking into that and uh, plan to add those. Um, yeah, so right now there's like, lo the loyalty card world is kind of interesting. There's a lot of different providers, uh, a lot of different proprietary systems. So we're still investigating different possibilities of loyalty cards for offline wallet. Great. I think this is it for this week. Um, cool. And we'll see you back again in two weeks. Yeah, so just a note, I mean, we'll be doing a couple of different formats. So mm -hmm. sometimes we'll invite some people from uh, the risk team here so they can answer questions about like what happened, what are risky transactions, how do I minimize my risky transactions, like why are some of my, uh, why are some of my orders canceled, and so on and so mm -hmm. forth. In addition to that, we'll probably review some of the applications that we find really good or that are monetizing very well, and then invite them in to, to speak with them about like their experiences. So stay tuned. We have, we'll be on every yeah. two weeks, every other week. Uh, post any questions that you have. Tell us what you want. And we will try to fill your needs. Great. Bye. Cool. See ya. See ya.